Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Campisi. I'm the co-founder and CTO of UE Life Sciences. And when our company uh, was founded, my partner and I, we had one mission, and that mission was to create global healthcare advantages for women around the world and to make a difference for the developing world. The statistics tell us that 70% of the deaths due to breast cancer originate in the developing world, as well as half of all the diagnoses. Most of which are late diagnosis, two thirds. So the question becomes, why is it that in the United States we have a five year survival rate that's relatively high, whereas in the developing countries it's dismal compared to what we have. We also noticed that Eight years ago, the number of deaths in the United States was exactly the same as in India. However, over these eight years, that incidence rate has doubled. Only in India, not in the United States. Not only is the incidence rate rising, but the age of incidence is also lowering. We see that more than half of the diagnoses are in women under the age of 50 years old which is somewhat extraordinary. None of which, or a very small percentage, went for any kind of early detection. The fact of the matter is, there really is no screening programs in the developing world. So we have to ask ourselves the question, why is it that in the United States we have these programs and these technologies, but in the developing world, we just can't utilize them? And it comes down to the following statistics. In the United States, we have a patient to doctor ratio of 4,000 to one, as opposed to in India where it's 120,000 patients to one radiologist. There's simply not enough resources. In addition, our standard of care, which is mammography, it's just not feasible. At approximately $40 a scan, we would have to get that price down to below a dollar, somewhere in the 50 cent area. Just not feasible for, um, for screening. So we ask ourselves the question, what if? If we were able to get a device, a technology that was, first of all, usable by health and social workers, so we did not put too much strain on the uh, physicians, ultra low cost, quick and painless, good clinical numbers, of course, completely tetherless, battery operated, able to store thousands of scans, and also be rugged enough to work in the trenches of the ruralist parts of the developing world. Our answer to these constraints is the eye breast exam. The eye breast exam is a handheld portable device that's painless, radiation free. It's operatable by community health workers, instant results at the point of care, and clinically effective and highly affordable. The way the device works is it basically has six electromechanical fingers that can do a palpation on the breast tissue just like a clinical breast exam does here in the US. But we can do it with 16 electromechanical fingers instead of human fingers. And what's most interesting about this particular device is it's scalable and it's inclusive. This can service the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor. We use the expression more for less for more very often when we talk about this device. We talk about more impact from a simpler device that's less complicated and inexpensive and reaching for more patients. We do that through our technology, which I described, but also through our business model. Our business model is extremely low cost, low maintenance, <clears throat> is able to uh, take advantage of diverse uh, distributing agreements that we have with our partners, and it's all based on a cloud background, so we can upload thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, results. If you look at a value proposition for the same price, this technology is able to screen dramatically more women in the developing world and also provide diagnosis and treatment. For our company, success is not defined as finding a breast cancer. It's defined as changing a clinical outcome. We don't feel that it's any benefit to find cancer if the patients are not being treated and something is not changing clinically for these patients. So we have put together a program that includes not only the screening but diagnosis and treatment as well. To date, we have done close to 40,000 eye breast exams, mostly in India and in the rural towns of Mumbai and Delhi and Bangalore. We have um, 
400,000 uh, from our CSRs that are going to be done in the following year. We have commitments from our many different um, CSRs that have joined our team in collaboration. As far as our achievements go, we've raised up to a little more than $5 million in grants and VC funding. We are FDA cleared as well, 2015 by the US FDA. To date, we have done four clinical trials, two of which are IRB uh, guided and also have been published in peer-reviewed journals. And again, over 30,000 scans to date. We're targeting 1,000 plus installations in the upcoming year. And we also have taken part in other innovations and been very successful uh, in some of those uh, awards as well. Some of our partnerships, we take great pride in our partnerships. CSRs, NGO, government partnerships, as well as private partnerships. We've teamed up from everyone from hospitals to doctors to banking institutions, anyone that could help us make a difference and get the device out there. And we have a team that's second to none. Our CEO, my partner, Mahir, um, that's myself, uh, Dr. Brooks, some of our advisors and our KOLs uh, in India, which have helped us get this device uh, around. You, you see, the, at the end of the day, and this is something that I don't think a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet could actually emphasize, there's a, a human impact on a device like this. In addition to being the CTO of UE Life Sciences, I also have two boys at home that I like to watch Yankee games with. I have a wife, I have siblings, I have parents, and these are the relationships that are important to me and they're important to all of us. And for any of you that have been touched by breast cancer, it's more than just the patient that's involved, it's families that are involved. And I, I can't help but think there's people on the other side of the world, for example, who have wives who have the genetic mutation for breast cancer, just like my wife happens to have, makes them 80% likely to develop breast cancer in their lifetime, which is devastating. Those families deserve the same fighting chance as we have, and that's really behind the mission of our product. And in fact, it's our duty and our responsibility to provide that innovation, and that's what we have at UE Life Sciences. And that's really the crux of our uh, product. So with that, I think our tagline uh, says it all. We are early detection for all. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm not sure I've got any questions for you, but okay. um, what's, the, what's the, your biggest obstacle? Um, yeah, so the, the biggest obstacle is this is a very, uh, uh, many of you alluded to this, this is kind of a radical change from what is the standard of care at the moment. I mean, the, the cost, as you saw, is dropping from $40 to less than a dollar. It's a, it's a completely different, um, different way of screening for breast cancer. We decided the way we did it is to create a microcosm, go to India and see if it works, see if the model of low cost screening uh, would work, and that's what we did. So our biggest hurdle right now, I think, is, is growth. How do we get that microcosm and expand it to different areas of the world and to different areas of India, and how could it benefit us here in the US as well? Of course, a lot of the areas you're talking about are rural areas where it's very hard to get access, etc. So right. how's the data extracted? Um, that's, a good, that's a good point. I mean, one of the major points of this device is the fact that you don't need a social health worker. I mean, you don't need a um, clinical health worker. It's a, a social health worker does the exams. The way the device works is it can store hundreds of thousands of scans on it. And then when it goes back to a central hub, it uploads everything to a cloud and all the analytics and data is offloaded to a back end. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Thank you.